Hello everyone, I'm Satris and this is my predictions for top 10 cards in the Cobalts and Catacombs expansion. So let's start from the top of the list, from the number 10 and go down eventually. So the first card I'm going to talk about is going to be the 4 mana 4-4 four, four minion for a row class. Uh, the stats are not so obviously high, it's just a normal, basically vanilla card. Uh, some would argue that vanilla 4-mana four, four, four minion would be a 4-5, so we lose one stat, um, half a stat somewhere, and it pays off during the game once we draw the 4-4s. Four uh, one of those three that we shuffled, uh, we basically get a free 4-4 four, four on the board. And if our deck is, uh, for example, a Miracle Rogue, we can cycle a lot, a lot of cards in one turn and probably uh, improve uh, the chance to draw that spider by a huge margin. So I think this card will gonna, uh, gonna be seen uh, play just because of the meta slowing down and the Miracle Rogue being quite viable in the meta. So I believe this is a very strong card and we shouldn't look down on it since you don't lose too much to play it and we improve uh, our deck by quite a bit. It's not game winning card, but it's a nice turn 4 filler, which um, Miracle Rogue I think is lacking at the moment. There's no very strong 4 mana place, so why not just fill it up with this card. Okay, number 9. It's gonna be the Dire Mole. It's a very interesting minion. Uh, some would say it's not that impactful, since it's only a 1 mana minion. It's, it's even for everyone, it's not uh, a class card even. So, but the thing is, it's a 1 mana 1 3 minion. Um, from our experience, we can see that all the 1 3 minions are very impactful so far in the game. For example, we have a mage with a mana worm, we have a warlock with uh, even double 1 3s, we have the uh, void, walker, void walker and the imp uh, to draw cards from discards. So those are very nice cards to contest the turn 1, turn 2 plays of opponent. Plus, if we include this card in the cards with the... Uh, in the decks that have synergy with the beasts, since it has the beast uh, text on it, it becomes very, very pow powerful. For example, we can use it in the Hunter and just drop it on Curve and follow it up with a Crackling Razor Maw, which is a perfect target. The Dire Mole is a perfect target for Razor Maw. Uh, before Hunter had the, um, uh, the alley cats as a 1 1s, but they are way easier to be, uh, to be removed. For example, Priest could use the Potion of Madness uh, and such, and the Dire Mole is immune to that. So it's basically a guaranteed target for Razor Maw. It's, it has added consistency. So we can play even more 1 drops in the Hunter now, but on its own, it's not gonna break the meta, so that's why it's on the 9th number. Uh, of course, the, um, the Druid has the Mark of Isharaj, which is a very nice buff, and you basically get a 2 mana, well not 2 mana, but turn 2 you get a 3-5 minion, which is insane, and you even draw a card, cycle it. So, it's a very, very strong follow-up, and in the aggro Druid, in mid-range or even aggro Hunter, it's possibly to see a lot of play. Uh, probably because of the, a lot of anti-aggro and control cards being printed, this is not going to be too impactful. I don't think there's going to be like a meta-breaking aggressive deck just because of this card. But I think, at least if not in this expansion, in the following couple expansions, it's going to be really important. Because it's a 1 mana 1-3 one, card. It's a very strong 1-drop and it's very, it has very nice synergies with, uh, with, uh, with beasts. So I think we're going to be seeing this card a lot. Okay, next card is Lylin Manipulator, the 4-mana Yeti. Uh, it has the elemental text on it, so immediately you can, you can even just play it in any elemental mage list. Even uh, like if you play a budget deck or something, uh, it totally works fine. But if you're holding any cards that didn't start in your deck, you reduce their cost by 2. So there's really nice interaction combo uh, shenanigans that can happen, and I don't know... I don't know that I don't see the deck that's gonna be uh, too beneficial for it, so it might be just too slow since it's it seems like a tempo minion. Um, it doesn't seem like a value card. Uh, it's not that cheap. It's a four mana, and you want to get the value for the body, which is not that hard. But still, 
um, you can't combo it with something so uh, too expensive. It takes too much time. But the effect is very strong. We can chain it with anything. Uh, the thing that it reduces not only the spells, uh, which we saw a couple of times already on our cards, that um, the re redu reduction is only on spells, uh, this card also reduces the cost of the minions. So if you discover elemental with the Servant of Kalimos, that's very beneficial. You can even reduce the Flame Elemental, which is not that great, uh, from the Firefly. But still, there's a lot of uh, different things that can happen. Of course, the Kabbalist Tome can be used as well to gain uh, through random mage spells and then just reduce those. Uh, we can also use the new uh, spell stone that we just got in the mage list. And um, it even works with Elementals way better, so maybe you can build a deck around that and get the random spells, reduce their cost, and sometimes you can even high roll. I wouldn't even uh, ditch the, uh, the idea of playing a quest Elemental Mage, which wouldn't be uh, oriented probably even in the, uh, the old school uh, combo of OTK. You can even play some kind of different list with elementals and maybe you just kill your opponent with board presence instead. And another card uh, I wanted to highlight for this uh, synergy, it's Frozen Clone, which is a secret that no one really played too much uh, in the, uh, one the, once the last expansion hit, but I think like this card works pretty well with it. Maybe you will get the Frozen Clone from, from random effects, you don't even have to run it, but still it's a nice consideration that uh, a minions that you copy from your opponents um, hand, well, when one opponent plays and gives you two random minions, you can reduce their cost also. So if it's a two drop, you basically play two drops, uh, uh, two two drops for, for free. Maybe he gives you something bigger and it happens. So I think, I think it's not a bad card, it's not gonna break the meta since I still don't, can't imagine too good of a deck it could be played in, but it's definitely one of the strongest cards in the expansion. Okay, let's go to the number seven. The number seven is the first, and spoilers are spoil, spoilers alert, the only spellstone I'm gonna be reviewing today, basically. Well, I'm gonna talk about another one, but in the top ten, this is the only one. And this is the Warlock's uh, spellstone. Um, it works like that. If you, if you take damage from your cards, uh, you can't take damage from your hero power uh, and improve this, uh, but you can take damage from... Uh, from some demons that like flame imps and even there's a couple of uh, new cards like there's a three drop a two four two, uh, three drop there's also no it's a two mana three uh, two mana two four uh, that deals damage to, to ourselves there's also a two mo uh, two one one drop um, that deals damage to ourselves and draws a card so there's a lot of new synergy for this card but even without too much synergy I think with even with all the cards it's possible to just run this card and be quite happy with it. It's definitely not the zoo card, it's more controlly, it's, uh, it's used to heal yourself and maybe swing the board a bit to your side by clearing something for 4 mana. So on the first stage it's not that great, it's 4 mana, deal 3 damage, heal for 3, but it's not that terrible that if you top deck it, sometimes it can still be good enough to keep you in the game, because it heals for 3, you can kill, kill a fledgling or uh, some important minion with 3 HP that's left uh, left alive for, for a turn or something. Um, and once you upgrade it at least once, it becomes really good. Uh, the only bad thing about this card, you can't, uh, you can't target the face, which I think is very important, but, but, uh, but I think it's still good enough to be on the top 10 list. Okay, let's go to the other card, and it's the number 6. Grumble, world, the World Shaker. Uh, the battle cry, return your other minions to your hand. They cost one. Okay, first let's talk about the stats. It's 6 mana, 7 7 shaman card, which is insane, uh, keeping in mind that it has 0 overload. There's no overload on this card, and there's no huge drawback. Like, uh, some, some would argue that uh, returning a, a card to your hand is not good, because you lose tempo, but look at the text it says they cost one mana so if the minion that you return costs one mana you can basically play it immediately if it's not turn six if it's turn seven you can just play even a death in dragon lord if you wanted to 
uh, by returning it and play it again. Maybe it was injured. Maybe you had a taunt on the board that was like with one HP. You can just get it back and play it again for one mana. And even if you don't have enough mana to play it, you can just play it next turn and just fill full board with uh, everything you returned. So I think it's a very, very nice card. Um, there's even very nice combinations with it. For example, we can play Jade. Jade Spirit. You just play it. If it survives as a like a 2-1, even a 2-3. A if opponents uh, prioritizes, uh, usually opponents prioritize killing the bigger Jade and leaving the Activator alive. So World Shaker basically forces them to kill the 2-3 first and just leave the, for example, a 5-5 Jade alive. Uh, of course, there's Aya also. Very interesting interaction because usually you want to Aya to die on its own uh, to even improve Jade count even more. But now you can just probably hit with it and return it and play it again, which is which would look bad because you don't want to bounce Aya back. But again, it's one mana, so it's one extra Jade. Why not? You can just improve the count by that. So all the battle cries uh, are really important. All the battle cry cards are very good. For example, Blaze Caller, you can play Elemental List. As you can see, the Grumble World Shaker itself is an Elemental. So you have a lot of syn synergies. You can play this into Blaze Caller, and you can return Blaze Callers for this. One mana, five damage is insane. Uh, there's also a Settlement of Kalamos, which gives you cards. So you can just get that card back and get the uh, discover more elementals and keep the value train going. So I really enjoy the Grumble World Shaker and I hope it sees a lot of play and I hope Shaman is good enough because it has some really nice interactions and some value plays. Okay, the next card, the number five. We are going to the top five zone and this is the Master Oak Heart. I didn't really like this card and I don't like the how it works too much. Um, I don't like the recruit mechanic uh, mechanic on its own too much, and it has a condition that it, it draws uh, recruits a uh, one, two, and three attack minions. So it it pulls three minions from your deck if you have them in the deck. So the prime example probably and the the most common one that everyone's gonna be trying for the day one is probably the Void Lord. Uh, it's the most important 3 attack minion that you can pull with the uh, Oak Heart. And if you have, you can even run two of them. And if, if you can manage to make your uh, deck uh, so it's the only 3 attack minion in the deck, it, it's a guaranteed pull. So you basically get a um, free Master Oak Heart, so you get a free 5-5 five five next to the Void Lord for 9 mana. Plus you cycle the Void Lord out of your deck and get closer to the Gul'dan for example. Um, also, there's there could be like other cards that you want to pull and just cycle to the to the Gul'dan faster. I think that's the main idea about this card in in that kind of deck. Uh, so you could pull the Homunculus for two mana and the Void Walker for one mana, uh, for one attack and two attack. So you would pull three taunts and uh, if opponent kills the Void Lord, you get even another one taunt. So it's insane amount of stats, insane amount of taunts in one turn. Plus, you cycle faster to the Gul'dan. So I really enjoy that card. Like, I don't enjoy it, I don't like the mechanic, but it's really powerful if you can build the deck around it quite often. Like, for example, people thought that the Prince was not good, the, um, the two mana 2-2 two, two, Prince Keleseth. But once we built the deck and it's kind of worked, people realize how strong it is. So I think that card might be quite similar to it, because if we don't find the deck that works very good, I think it's going to be a, a problem. Okay, let's not stop too much for on that card and continue with the Psychic Scream. The number four, the hard removal for a priest. As if priest needed more. <laughs> we have uh, Deaths, we have, um, we have like Dragon Fires, we have Okanai Circles, we have Pin Size Horrors. There's a lot of, a lot of clears in priest and we even have another one, which is... I think the best out of the options we can get. The best part of, about this, it even improves the Raza Priest, which was the dominating um, dominating deck in the meta for quite some time already. It Im even improves that deck, and uh, by improving, for example, one of the best, uh, one of the worst matchups uh, for Raza Priest was uh, Big Druid. And um, there, there are situations when opponent plays Deathwing Dragon Lord, and it's a 10 mana 12 12. You can death it, but there's usually a lot of uh, dragons coming after it, so you have to have a silence and a death, which is the best answer to the to the card, or 
Silence and Anduin um, to just kill it off without any drawback. But uh, usually you waste a couple of removal uh, removals before uh, they drop the Dragon Lord, and you don't really answer it efficiently. So this card, Psychic Scream, it helps to just shuffle it back to your opponent's deck, and your opponent loses a lot of tempo because he used 10 mana to just play this card. And even if he draws it again, he has to uh, spend another 10 mana to play it. And probably you will have a, lo a lot of uh, cards to swing it back again. And opponent is just wasting time. So another interesting card that would be um, easier answered is Cobalt Scalian. Because it's not as big as Dragon Lord, but usually it's played on a couple of minion board, and sometimes it's annoying because it uh, Dragon Fire doesn't kill it. You have to waste death on a five five, which is uh, doesn't feel great against uh, most of the decks because you are saving it for probably like um, uh, you are saving it for bone mares or something. And the uh, scale beans are very annoying. So if they have a couple of minions, maybe maybe they are not that good. Maybe they, he has flame elemental, uh, fl like as a rogue, flame elemental, uh, firefly, and uh, he drops a scale bean. So you you shuffle back into his ha uh, deck the the one double one to use and a scale bean. So he opponent loses tempo again, and he might just draw uh, dead with a uh, one two minions. So it's a very interesting card, and I really like it, and I think it's kind of broken, but it makes sense since the, after the next expansion the Dragonfire is gonna be leaving, I think, uh, the set of the standard list, so they need a replacement for it. I, th I think it's too strong of a replacement for now, but we'll see how it fends off. And of course, there's buffs. I forgot to mention those, and uh, the Spike Red Steed, if the Paladin plays it, or Paladin plays even a Megazord and a couple of Murlocs, uh, for example, they play a Death Rattle on Murlocs, and it's very annoying because if you kill them with a the Dragonfire, sometimes, sometimes they have a Tyrant, for example, to follow up and just push that damage. And they have a Steeds on minions, and uh, usually it's not that annoying for a Priest because you have uh, Pain, you have pin size, uh, pin size Potion, you can just uh, somehow clear everything up. Potion of Madness, of course. But sometimes it's annoying, especially if they play this Steed on a 2 attack minion and make it a 4-6 or 4-8 or something. So you just shuffle it back and you don't worry about it. And they don't even get the buff back anywhere. In hand, in deck, nowhere. Okay, number three, the Unstable Evolution. I really like this card because um, everyone is everyone's thinking that Evolve is a very uh, random effect. And I agree totally, but this Unstable Evolution helps to reduce the randomness by quite a bit. Because if you have spare mana or you have a couple of bad evolved minions, you can just fix it. For example, you used Doppel Gangster Evolve, you got a couple of bad minions and the, the good ones were killed by opponents. You can just evolve a couple of times. You have like 6 mana, 7 mana, you can evolve like 5 times, maybe heal power, depending what you get for the totems uh, from the evolves. And you can just keep evolving until you hit really good minion that you really want. For example, sometimes it happens that you need to hit evolve. Like, how often it happens that you have to hit evolve and get a taunt to survive. Sometimes this is going to be way more important. Because you can keep evolving one minion till you get a taunt. Then you can evolve uh, another minion till you get some charge or something to remove something. There's going to be a lot, a lot of uh, RNG. But at the same time, it's controlled RNG. Because you can keep evolving a lot of times and increase the chance it's, it gives you a good minion. There's of course the, the meme route everyone is, uh, everyone is thinking about, that you can have a full board of the uh, totems, you evolve them all, and there's like 15 or 20% chance to hit a pr Apprentice or Elemental. And uh, then the evolution costs zero mana, and you can just keep evolving other, your, uh, your other two drops till they are basically 12-12s uh, or 10-10s or 8-8s, the Giants to maximum. So it's one of the more insane combinations, but I don't think it's gonna happen that rare. I think it's gonna happen like at least once in 100 games. Like it's still RNG, but still it's gonna happen sometimes. So keep an eye for the trolled videos for this one. Okay, the next card, the number two, we are nearing to the end of the list and it is the Dustbreaker. Most of the people put this at, uh, at the first spot, I think. And this is a very insane card. It's a 4-mana Hellfire on a stick. And it has a dragon 
text on it. So you, you can just play this in the Dragon Priest that is actually quite good now and just improve the win rate even more because the Dragon Priest was uh, weakest against aggressive decks. And this basically makes it the best deck against aggressive decks. You just keep it in the starting hand even against control most of the time just for um, for other uh, dragons to have synergy with it, um, to activate, to have an activator because it's a cheap activator and usually you can just play it on 4 and just remove at least a couple of small minions and it's good enough. Um, I think it's a very very strong card. Uh, we can compare it to the Primordial Drake which is uh, 8 mana deal 2 to all minions. Of course it gives a taunt and a ver uh, way better body but it, it costs twice as much and you even get a better AoE than the Primordial Drake, which is insane. Like, it's insane amount of clear. I think, I think it, wa it wasn't a good idea to make it that strong. Uh, if the Dustbreaker wasn't even a dragon, I think it would still be seeing play, at least probably one off maybe in the deck or something, maybe even two. But even without the dragon text, I think it would be playable. And now, I think it's gonna be played in all dragon decks. Dragon Priest decks, because it's a Priest card. And of course, uh, as I said, you keep it in a mulligan hand because uh, because of the Nether Spide Historian. It's a very nice 4 four attack card that you would keep to activate the Historian. For example, uh, the other dragon that we used to keep uh, as a Dragon Priest is a Twilight Drake. And when you think about it, it's a very bad card to play against aggro. You don't want to keep the um, uh, Twilight Drake to, keep, uh, to win against aggro. It's usually too slow with just a 4-4 four, four because you waste a couple of cards or a 4-5, which is not good enough, uh, you, it doesn't have a taunt or anything. And this is a 4-4 four, four that deals 3 damage to all. <laughs> this is sick. This is, this is a good card, but I'm feeling sad for the aggro at the moment. There's not, not, not no strong aggro cards in this expansion, so I'm feeling bad for them. And the number one, the Void Lord. Um, it's a very strong card. It's a 3-9 minion with uh, three one three uh, demon towns uh, void walkers from it so it's a very strong card uh, because there's a lot of interactions with it on its own if it was not demon and um, the one threes wasn't demons i don't think it would be that strong but the fact that you can recruit this card with the um, with the legendary cards or use the new uh, skull of the manari weapon for the warlock and just get it at the start of the turn I think it's not that good of an interaction, but still, it's a huge tempo swing if you get it. And Master Oakheart, which we mentioned before um, in this review, there were, uh, it can recruit this from the deck and just pull it off so you won't have to play it yourself and you just pull some of the cards, make a better, uh, better swing with your cards and even cycle uh, some cards out of your deck faster. So I really like that Void Lord. It's, it's a good anti-aggro card because it has so many taunts, so many stats, uh, plus it's not bad against uh, even control, I think. And we can see the Cruel of Unshackled, uh, Cruel the Unshackled is also very, it has very nice synergy with it, because you don't have to spend 9 mana to play a 3 mana taunt, uh, 3 9 taunt, and you can play, play it with the Cruel, maybe you have a Doomguard running also next to it, so it would be a charge plus the 3 9, so it's, it would be insane. So I think Cruel, Cruel Demon Lock gonna be a thing, at least at least for a while. And the, of course the school, oh, the weapon is not going to be played at, at least at the beginning of, of the expansion I think. So that's why I'm not mentioning it even in this review. And everything is for the Gul'dan. It makes everything better. Um, it's a bit clunky that you play a Void Lord, it dies and you get those three one trees that they die. So you summon only taunts, you don't get like insane amount of pressure, you get only defensive stats after you play Gul'dan. But I think it's still good enough, because sometimes you play only, uh, you play two, two little demons and you have to play Gul'dan early on, and you're sad. And now even one, one Void Lord is way good enough to play Gul'dan, I think. And that's it for the main portion of the, of the review, and the honorable mentions. I wanted to mention a couple of cards and interactions that I'm looking forward to a lot. And the first one is the Spellstone for Druid. I don't think it makes the cut um, makes the cut of top 10 cards just because it doesn't fit the uh, doesn't fit every single Druid list. It's a good card, don't get me wrong, it's basically living mana, the whoever remembers that one. Even without upgrading. So it's one mana deal to damage, which is insane 
for um, uh, for 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 just playing it like as a removal. But nowadays there's not a lot uh, not a lot of three twos that you want to kill, so I don't think it's needed in the big druid or J druid. But the most interesting thing I'm looking forward to using this with the bear, uh, bark skin. Uh, it helps to immediately improve um, and upgrade the spell uh, the spellstone, and we can use all of them with a gadget sand auctioneer. So it's gonna be a miracle druid, and I think it's gonna be a very strong archetype for it. Miracle Druid. I think it even it is even strong now, and it's not explored too much. And with those two more one one mana spells, it's insane how how defensive and aggressive and heavy cycle deck you can build with it. Um, in interesting reaction, I want to throw it in that you can use it with a twig. I think it's a bit too much, <laughs> but still, people don't like the twig too much. Uh, it's a four mana Druid weapon and. It gains 10 mana crystals once uh, once it dies, when, when the weapon is removed or uh, or reduced all the 5 stacks. So the interesting part about this and why I would maybe try to include it in a, a Miracle Druid is that you, you can attack 4 times with it and once you have the 5th attack to uh, refresh the mana crystals, you can play the gadget sand, play all the spells, use the mana and probably you, you just draw like 4 cards or something. And then you attack again, you gain 10 mana and you shuffle again. And basically there is 100% that you will draw all your deck out. And if you play Jade Idols, because I think you should, if you're running this twig and everything and you want to make that big of a swing, you can play Jade Idols and even upgrade the Jade Idols to like plus 5 in one turn. You just have to have insane APM. This is like Starcraft APM. <laughs> well, maybe not that much. But still, this is a lot of spell drawn and animations you have to see up uh, just because of that twig. And if, if someone forgot that there's a lot of a lot of more uh, one mana spells in the in Druid, we have a Naturalize which is a very strong removal. We can even use it against newer decks that are gonna be playing like uh, big decks, like uh, maybe someone tries Big Hunter or Big Warrior or something. You, you just use Naturalize, maybe even mill something. That's perfectly fine. Then we can do certain scales, which also buffs. Uh, we can use certain scales on the uh, gadgets and then buff our uh, spellstone even more. So there's a lot of synergy between all those cards. Plus, it gives survivability. The naturalized gives you hard removal, and Jade Dial gives you infinite value in a deck. It, you can't hit fatigue, and also one mana spell. There's like the Geist would just wreck this deck outright. <laughs> But if you dodge into the Geist, it's, it should be interesting. It should be interesting. And also, I would want to taste, uh, taste, uh, state one more thing. There's a Moonfire and we have the new Spellstone, which is deal, deal damage for one mana, which is insane with uh, Maligos. So Maligos Miracle Druid. This is my guess to be maybe even tier 1 deck. Because there are so many spells, you can even use the twig uh, without even heavy cycling with Jade Idols. You can just cycle all your deck to find that combo of Malgos, Moonfire, maybe Innervate and double uh, double spells, for example, the the, um, the new spell. There's a lot, a lot of damage to be have uh, to be had with this, and I, I really enjoy, and I, I I can't wait for this. This is the most, this is the best thing I'm waiting for, the candle shot. I think it's worth mentioning that uh, Hunter got a very early weapon. It's been a while since we got a weapon for the Hunter, which is cheap. Uh, the last one was Glyxuka, the 2-2 two, two mana... Um, the 2-2 two, two weapon for 2 mana that buffs uh, plus 1 on the minion. And this is weaker, but it's a turn 1 uh, weapon, and it opens a really interesting thing for the Hunter that wasn't there before. They can play pirates <laughs> at last, pirate hunter, and I think that's very interesting. You can see, use the deck hands. Before you had only one weapon for three mana, which is a bit too slow for an aggressive deck, and because you want to use the weapon to protect your minions, uh, with candle shot you probably can't protect too much since it's only one damage. But you're immune, so you can even use it late game to maybe ping off some uh, high attack minions. But you can use Naga Corsairs, you can use ca South Sea Captains. I think there should become an archetype. At least people will be trying, at least I, I'll be trying to make um, Pirate Hunter work, at least for a while. 
I don't know how strong it's gonna be. Um, it's not good against all those uh, taunts and um, void lords and everything, but nonetheless, it's a pirate a pirate hunter, so I'm interested. And the, another interaction I wanted to uh, highlight uh, is the copy sisters, as I like to call them. It's Sonya Shadow Dancer and Zolid the Gorgon. They are both legendary cards. One of them is uh, the Sonya is a rogue legendary, and Zola is just a normal common legendary. So, uh, on its own, they are bad. In the current rogue decks, they are bad. But there's this thing called the quest. The quest rogue is very interesting and. It's basically two more bouncers in the deck. So once the quest rogue was introduced, the, they didn't introduce any new bounce effects to the game. So this helps a lot because it's interesting to see if we have more bouncers, if the deck is going to become more uh, consistent. And maybe you can hit those five minions fast enough. Um, and a lot of people are thinking about uh, Stone Tusk Boar or the, uh, the South Sea Deckhand with the Shadow Dancer to just play it and uh, basically finish the quest in one turn by suiciding it over and over again. Of course, you need a lot of mana for that, but still, you can at least do it uh, for a couple of times. And another interaction that I would like to uh, uh, say is Cold Light Oracle. The bouncers are not only good in the... Um, in the quest rogue, it's also good in the mill rogue. I don't know how good it's gonna be, but there's a couple of cards with it uh, to to improve the mill rogue, and I think it's gonna be an interesting deck, and it might be seeing some play, especially with those control decks going around. So I think we should keep an eye on those rogues. I'm not an expert on rogue by far, but I'm gonna be checking those decks out definitely. And two other cards that I want to highlight, it's just. Two very good cards that didn't make the top 10. It's Vulgar Homunculus. Uh, the 2 mana, 2 4 taunt and deals 2 damage to yourself. And it's a demon. So you can run it in Zoo instead of Keleseth. Uh, make it uh, with the buffs, the demon buffs and everything. It's it's a very nice 2 mana minion. One of the strongest ones, not, if not the strongest 2 drop in the game at the moment. So it's very strong. And... The Cobalt Librarian. Draw a card and deal two damage to your hero. Basically a life tap on a stick. And although all, both, both those two minions deal damage to ourselves, so there's a couple of interactions uh, here and there. Uh, we, can, uh, we can improve the Spellstone with it, and I think it's very strong cards. So yeah, thank you very much for watching my top 10 predictions uh, and some honorable mentions. I hope you liked it, and see you in the next video. This was Citrus. <laughs>